You know how you can tell the, um, the more formal, highbrow events? It's when someone introduces someone who then introduces someone else. <laughs> So we spent a lot of, um, actually we spent very little time, but um, a lot of effort on assembling this panel and I'm pretty psyched for what we were able to put together. So it started with this germ of what is the relationship between readers and their characters and then of course, what's the relationship between writers and their characters. So the first thing that came to my mind is that, well, you gotta have a, neurology to under, a neurologist to understand how anything is really understood. But you also need an awesome novelist with a reputation for writing really deep characters. Michelle Richmond is the author of Year of Fog, No One You Know, Dream of the Blue Room, and The Girl in the Far Fall Away Dress. Um, to her right, when you're talking about readers and writers, well, you need somebody who's read every book that's ever been written. <laughs> Elaine Petricelli is um, extremely well read. She has to be because she is the president of Book Passage, uh, the fiercely independent bookstores and literary event centers located at the Ferry Building and in Corte Madeira, as well as, of course, on the interwebs. Now, to her right is interesting. Now, the title is The Effect of Fiction on Your Mind, but a memoir is sometimes referred to as creative nonfiction or non-creative fiction. The relationship between a memoirist and his characters, well, I just thought it, that would be a very interesting thing to throw into the loop. This is Mark Vonnegut. His memoir, sitting right in front of him, his most recent memoir is titled Just Like Someone Without Mental, Illne Without Mental Illness, Only More So. It is a searingly amusing iconoclastic account of growing up with his father, Kurt Vonnegut, and coping with mental illness, and then finally finding a calling as a pediatrician. To his right is um, really actually the person that set the germ of this panel, the idea for it in my mind. I came across her name in an article that I don't even remember exactly what it was now, but when I went to her website, I thought, ah, if I got a neurologist and her, I could do anything. <laughs> Blakey Vermeul um, teaches humani humanities at Stanford University and is writing a book about how accurately the maps we carry in our heads, especially the stories we make up, describe the road under our feet. Finally, serving as both moderator and chair of the panel is Robert Burton. He is the former chief of neurology at Mount Zion UCSF Hospital. He's the author of Doc in the Box, Cellmates, and On Being Certain. His next book is titled The Involuntary Self, and it explores how our brain generates our sense of self. Dr. Robert Burton. The most important thing tonight is to have fun, so you guys can interrupt at any time, except just don't speak up. <laughs> so just raise your hand if you want to interrupt at any time and add to the melee. Uh, when Ransom and I were talking about doing this a few months ago, uh, a story occurred to me which I thought I would relate as a sort of a starting point. When I was a resident in neurology about eight million years ago at San Francisco General, I saw a patient who'd had a small stroke and it left him completely intact intellectually, except he couldn't find words. And so I walked into his room and I said to him, what happened? And he was mute. And then about a couple of days later, I said, do you know what happened? And he said, crew. And I said, crew? Crew. So I, next day I said, what do you think happened? He said, crew, 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 crew. And he kept repeating it, sort of rhythmically. <coughs> and I had no idea what he was talking about, but I was trained to learn to listen. Eventually, after a few weeks, he made a pretty good partial recovery, and I said, what happened to you? He said, I had a stroke. I said, well, why did you tell me you said crew? He said, well, when I was a kid, I read this story, and it was about the Harvard uh, rowing team. And I always 
wanted to be a member of the Harvard Rowing Team. And I remember reading about the coxswain, and every time he started the appeal, he went, stroke, stroke. <laughs> I said, well, you, well, did you go to Harvard? No. Have you ever rowed? No. He said, but it was a great story. And I thought to myself, that's really fantastic. If he had a self-image that included a story he had read as a kid. And that had somehow <clears throat> permeated his very sense of self. Am I too close, too far? Cross the street? <laughs> so can you, everybody, is that clear enough? And what I realized at that time, we didn't have any concept of what they now call maps of the self or how things are represented in the brain. This is a long time ago. And I just realized that we had little nuggets. But it's more like what, how Proust might have seen an image from drawn from multiple sources, smell, taste, whatever. But I didn't realize that a story could become a part of a person's life and actually part of his language, even though he could not remember the story. And it really had happened many years ago. It had become embedded in what was him. And when I was thinking about it, so here we are, some 40 years later, and cognitive science is all the rage. Let me just ask you guys a question. How many people here have read in the last month a novel short story. How many have read an article that included an fMRI scan? <laughs> How many have read a study in psychology in general in the last month? And I think what's happened is we're seeing an overlap where it, it, that neuroscience has sort of crept up on modern day concepts of what a story is even because a lot of the neuroscience is itself a story. The stories are being told by some 40,000 neuroscientists who in some ways are as close to fiction writers as a memoirist is. They're telling their version of what they see of as reality. And yet, we really don't have a clear handle on what the self is, what the mind is, etc. Nevertheless, it is stories that make us tick. So I thought what we would explore, at least today, would be have everybody give a little speech on what they think is the present day concept of a story in view of how psychology is affecting us, and how the story affects them personally. I think I'd like to ask each panelist to start with, and, and let me just say this, I've read each person's work and I know Elaine for a zillion years and she knows more stories than I'll ever remember. So and each person in his own way has tried to understand the relationship of how the mind and the story affect themselves personally, how they affect the story in, in the interrelationship your psyche, which they don't use that word anymore, <coughs> your personal behavior affects your story 